There won't be any parties for Diddy behind bars as he's now on suicide watch. So let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman here on True Crime MTN. I'm joined by my former college and law school classmate who happens to be an amazing lawyer up in New York, former prosecutor Janine Gilbert. Welcome, Janine. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Well, better than Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs, Puff Daddy, Puffy, he is now number 37452-054 in the Bureau of Prisons. He woke up at 6 a.m. today, and he was given a breakfast of cereal, fruit, and a breakfast cake. It's not too bad, but his lawyers are saying that this facility where he's kept, which is called uh, the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center, is amongst the worst anywhere. And I, I believe that's also where Ghislaine Maxwell was kept. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find that answer out ASAP. But uh, it's, uh, it's his first days of incarceration on his racketeering and sex trafficking charges. He's pled not guilty, but you know, he's clearly not liking it. He's on suicide watch. Janine, what's your initial thoughts? Well, I'm not surprised he's on suicide watch. MDC is one of the worst facilities in uh actually in the federal system. Um, I did have a client who was in MDC not not too uh, long ago. And in fact, I have visited MDC and it is a horrible facility. While my client was there, my client was there for about six weeks. And during that time period, there were three murders, multiple stabbings, and a lot of um, violence that went down. So, uh, and there were maggots in his food. Um, MDC is a horrific facility. So I am not at all surprised that someone who led the lifestyle that Puffy did um, would be on suicide watch since he has fallen so far down, uh, all the way down, all the way down. Well, it looks like that Diddy is in the same facility, not just as Ghislaine Maxwell was, but also of R. Kelly. and. When R. Kelly's news came out, you know, we thought that that was as bad as it gets. You can make the argument that Diddy's actions were even greater in scope, even worse, because so it seems like these were massive parties and so many people knew about it and no one spoke up. But it's a parade of horribles. And here are people like whether it's R. Kelly, Glenn Maxwell or Diddy, who went from the penthouse to the outhouse. Because although Jeffrey Epstein wasn't at this facility, both facilities, the one that Epstein was in and Ghislaine Maxwell, are both disgusting places that perhaps should be shut down if there was a res resources to do so. But, Janine, it's awful, these places, but, you know, they're being charged with awful crimes. And these people, you could say, are awful people. Uh, for sure. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, I don't know that I would say Puffy is worse uh, I do think that since R. Kelly decided he needed to violate young girls, that in my opinion, that's a bit worse than Puffy. Um, but quite honestly, perhaps they're just on par because what they've done to women and the disrespect they've shown and the sexual assault that they've committed is disgusting across the board. Um, but when it comes to the facilities, uh, yes, MDC should be shut down. It's disgusting. It is it is a horrible place to be, but uh, it's also currently the only federal prison in New York City. Uh, so, with respect to all the cases that are brought by the new by the Southern District of New York and the Eastern District of New York, that is the only facility that can hold the individuals that are arrest arrested and um, that face charges in those in those districts. So unfortunately, is the it is the only place that exists to uh, to detain these individuals. Well, it went from a $48 million mansion and a private plane to living with 1,217 other inmates uh, where you have to not just get up at six, you got to have your bed made by 7.30 and, in the morning. <laughs> and uh, the, you have the inmate counts uh, continuously and you have to be standing at bedside when you have that. It's just, it's it's not any fun. Now, what's going to happen is I, I expect his lawyers to continually to try to fight for his pretrial release. But the judge in this case said no bond. And the reason why is because Diddy is being charged with crimes behind closed doors. These 
sex trafficking uh, crimes, allegedly. The crimes of racketeering, a lot of it occurred behind the closed doors. And so if he was confined to his huge mansion on house arrest with a $50 million bond, what's to stop him from doing this again? And that's what the judge was concerned about. It's interesting. He focused on that danger to the community as opposed to a flight risk. I would say he's as much of a flight risk as a danger because of his resources and his private plane. So yeah. I think, yeah, right. I mean, so I think it was like a no brainer to give him no bond, but his own lawyers seem to be very surprised by that. Uh, I'm not at all surprised, particularly since originally my client who was a white collar defendant was given no bond. Um, and quite honestly, that surprised me. But with respect to uh, P. Diddy, who's facing serious charges, which include violence against numerous individuals um, and sexual violence and sexual trafficking. Sex trafficking is a huge problem and and uh, faces substantial time, uh, including potentially a life sentence. I am not surprised that he was not given a, uh, any bond at all. Um, I don't I would be very surprised, actually, if he is given a bond because uh, because of his resources and because of the dangerous element related to the crimes that he's been charged with. So I don't think he'll be getting out anytime soon, certainly not before trial. You know, the video is going to come into play, and I think it, it uh, I think it was a consideration, the video of him physically assaulting Cassie. But yeah, but what's interesting is that is that completely relevant to the charges? I mean, the charges are sex trafficking and racketeering. I guess the forceful violence to keep people under your control would be part of it. But his relationship was ca with Cassie. That was like domestic violence, it seemed like. Uh, but it was Cassie who blew the whistle on everything. And I believe she's one of the victims. So it does go to the forcible compulsion element yeah. um, with respect to the sexual violence. Um, it does go to whether she felt compelled to remain with him. It, go it goes to, which I think also goes to the, se uh, to the sex trafficking piece. Um, so, and whether she would then perform sexual acts on others as a result. So, the the video, I think, is a very strong piece of evidence with respect to all of those counts um, because it shows the intimidation and and coercion that he uh, held over her. You know, it's a great point, Janine, because for the federal crime of sex trafficking, if you're dealing with an adult victim, you have to have either force, fraud or coercion, one of those when it comes to an underage victim, you don't need any of it. And that's why it's easier to prove sex trafficking when it comes to R. Kelly because it was an underage alleged victim. And if well, actually underage victim, it's it's he's been convicted. So let's let's remove the uh, alleged. alleged. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. So but when you're dealing with an underage victim, you don't need force, fraud or coercion. You just need a commercial sex act. But when you have an adult victim, it is it requires force, fraud or coercion. That's where that video comes into play. So it's more than just showing that he was a bad guy and abusive and guilty of, of domestic violence, which is a state crime, not really prosecuted as much on the federal level. But when it comes to sex trafficking, to show that element of force, well, there you go. He is keeping her in line by dragging her out physically. And remember, he denied all this stuff until the video came out, which, of course, goes to the adage that people lie, but video doesn't. Once that video came out, he had to apologize. And all of a sudden, it seemed like the house of cards kept crumbling, crumbling down because he was like, they're all liars. They're all interested in money. None of this is true. And then all of a sudden the video, oh yeah, that video. And now we know it's even bigger and worse in total than that. Well, I kind of thought that, uh, not I kind of thought, I thought that he was going to go down the minute he settled the lawsuit with Cassie uh, within 24 hours. So, and that was long before the video was released. So I knew that this was, that that was just the beginning. Um, he, 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 he made his bed and now he's lying in it in MDC because he, he, he's done a lot of bad things and he did a lot of bad things to a lot of women and a lot of other people. So he, you know, you reap what you sow and now he is in a place where 
he may learn some lessons that he never wanted to learn. So you don't agree with Maria Bartiromo, the right wing uh, legal, uh, well, financial uh, commentator on TV who thinks that uh, the reasons why that this arrest happened was to hurt Donald Trump? No, not at all. I, I don't even understand the connection. You know, it's just it's it whatever happened to her. I mean, she used to be like a normal commentator on NBC, and now she's like gone down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. So she was speaking on her show last week, and she claimed that Diddy was only arrested to distract from the alleged assassination attempt against former President Trump to take it off the front page. She actually said the timing of P. Diddy's arrest, please. I mean, so uh, she's become a major conspiracy theorist. She said that they must have had the P. Diddy arrest on the shelf, waiting to take it off the shelf for when they needed it. And then she added, and yesterday, boy, oh boy, did they need it because the questions were spiking everywhere as far as how is it possible that another assassination attempt happened, that other that another would-be assassin was within a couple of hundred yards of President Trump. As we're all asking these questions, boom, they take P. Diddy in, and now we're all talking about that. Take it off the front page. This is the strategy over and over again. I saw right through it as soon as it happened. Okay. I mean, so, uh, right? so Maria Bartiromo believes that the white right-wing Republican man who attempted to assassinate President Trump um, was somehow that 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 Damian Williams somehow knew that that was going to happen and Damian Williams is the US attorney in the Southern District of New York he somehow knew that that was going to happen so he made sure that the FBI arrested P Diddy on the following day so that it could take over the news cycle of the attempted assassination on President Trump well, that when is you believe that yeah, Literally when, you crazy. That, <laughs> when you're when you believe that everything is a conspiracy and there's no truth and we're all transactional, then you think that prosecutors are all politicized and weaponized, and that's unfortunately the state of the country. When uh, it's it's awful. The, one correction: the uh, the alleged uh, sh uh, attempted shooter in this case, in the second assassination attempt, this guy Ruth, he uh, is not a registered Republican. Uh, he I believe is a registered Democrat. The first guy was a registered Republican. The first attempt at assassin was a registered Republican. Uh, Ruth is this uh, guy with a screw loose who had supported Trump apparently in 2016, then lost favor yeah. with him and is a Democrat. But uh, yeah, oh, I, I well, don't think anyone wants to claim All him. over the news, it's they've said that he was a Republican. So I know that you would know since it was your district, but. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't live here. He just came down here from North Carolina and Hawaii. But yeah, I've uh, I've been living that in the past week. Uh, it's yeah. not my case anymore. The feds have it. That's why I'm allowed to talk about it. So with right. that, we'll end it there. Janine Gilbert, thank you. As always, great discussion. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment below and share with a friend. Thank you for getting us over 58,000 subscribers, and we'll see you next time.